He has never failed me yet. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everywhere I go, I'm going to tell the world, hallelujah, that Jesus Christ has never failed me yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can anybody tell it? Hallelujah. Can anybody tell it? Hallelujah. Can you look at your neighbor and say, I have a testimony this morning. Hallelujah. I have a testimony this morning of God's goodness. Hallelujah. And of his grace. Hallelujah, and of his mercy, hallelujah. Oh, God, I bless your name this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just let the praises of God be heard in the building today. We don't need any music, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, let the praises praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the worshipers worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the high praises of God be made. Hallelujah in this place today. Hallelujah. Let it be heard today, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise him with your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise him with your hands. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. 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 Magnify the Lord with me today. Hallelujah. Let's make him big. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm encouraged. Hallelujah. 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 It's been a weekend of conviction. Hallelujah. It's been a weekend. Hallelujah of correction hallelujah 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 god hallelujah we he love us god he loves us y'all hallelujah because he chases the one he loves hallelujah hallelujah thank you god oh god we bless you this morning hallelujah let his praise be heard hallelujah Hallelujah, let his praises be heard in here today, God. Hallelujah, we thank you for your sacrifice, God. Hallelujah, we do this in remembrance of you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise his name. Hallelujah, glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Take a moment. loves us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How great. Hallelujah. Is our God. Sing with me. How great. Is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah. Everybody help me sing it. Oh, tell me how great is our God.
some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Hallelujah. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And we praise and magnify your holy name. God is my everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you look at your neighbor and say, God is my everything. Hallelujah. He's my joy and sorrow. He is my hope for tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My hope is in him. Hallelujah. Oh, God is God.
Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come giving you praise and honor and glory. Dear Father, we awake to this new day, a day born in the lifetime of our faith. And God, we come lifting you up and thanking you for this day, knowing, God, that all that we do this day, we do because you have touched us. You have placed life within us. You have given us the activities of our limbs, and our minds are yet still stayed on you. For every time we come, God, and we begin to think of your goodness and of your mercy and all that you have done for us, God, we can't help but say, God is my everything. Everything that I need, God, you are. And we are here lifting you up and giving all praise, all glory and honor to you, God. We thank you, God, for all that you've done in our lives. We thank you for the days that have passed, God, how we can look back and see how you have kept us. And we can look ahead knowing that you are yet still keeping us. So, God, we thank you and we praise you and we give all the glory unto you. Now, God, we ask that you will bless the offering. We ask, God, that you will bless those who have to give and those who do not have to give. Bless us all, Father God, individually and most of all collectively, that whatsoever we do will be done to lift up the kingdom and to glorify you. And we thank you and we praise you for it because you is all that we need. Let all the people say amen, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We say praise the Lord to everybody. In the name of the Lord, I just want to remind all our leaders um, this morning at the service, we need to see you in the back, please. We have to go forward in the name of the Lord. And we want to thank all of you for um, your support in ministry especially those who supported our diocese meeting and the uh, minister's training on yesterday. We thank you for um, all of those things in the name of the Lord. Um, we ask you to uh, continue the prayer for me and the First Lady as we continue to deal with our physical challenges. But God is good, amen? amen. God is good. Glory amen. To God. And we're so excited about what the Lord is doing in our midst. And this morning, this morning, I just want to let you know, Elder Brown will be bringing the message, and amen. And those who are listening to us alive, we want to invite you out to the sanctuary where the power and the anointing of the Lord is being moved. I know you're comfortable on the couch, but it's something about being in the presence of God with the saints. Amen. And, and we take all the safety precautions that we've got to take. Be sure you're safe. So we want to invite you out. Those who are listening to us live, amen. And uh, I just believe God has a great blessing for you. As we get ready to embrace the coming year and our season of Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas and so forth and New Year's, God has already placed in my heart the vision for next year. And I just believe God's going to take us to a level, an explosion of level we've never experienced in him. So we want you to be a part of that great move. I just believe in my spirit, God is already doing in the name of the Lord. At this time, as the choir uh, prepare for the man of God to come, let's receive him with great honor. Tremendous young man who loves the Lord, 
is God's servant, and we are so glad and we're proud of him, and I know you are too, in the name of the Lord. So put your hands together as God presents his servant to us.
and everyone that can stand, stand. Sing a little bit more of that real quick. I don't know what you've been going through on this week, but you made it to the house to hear a word from the Lord. Everybody that can hear, lift your hands to him. This is a sign of saying, Lord, I surrender all. Here's my life, Lord. Fill my cup. If you desire healing, lift your hands. If you desire deliverance, lift your hands. Whatever you in need of, lift your hands to the Father right now. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning, Lord God. We thank you for um, you just being in our presence, Lord. You said when two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst, Lord. We thank you for our pastor and first lady, Lord God. We thank you for the yokes that's being destroyed in their lives even right now. And the burdens that's being lifted right now. We thank you, Lord God, for total healing. You don't have to do anything, Lord. Because you said when we touch and agree in the clear thing, that it shall come to pass. So, Lord, we believe in you by faith. That by your grace and your mercy, we shall have deliverance. We shall be set free. We shall be made whole. Those that are listening, on the airways. Expect God to do something in your life right now. He is waiting to hear your voice. To hear the sound that he created you to make. But oh, when his people are gathered together in his name. And glorify his name. And lift his name on high. He hears our cry, and he comes to our rescue. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. I decrease that you increase. You're the potter, and, I, and I'm the clay. Mold me and shape me into the vessel that is pleasing to you right now. Open our ears so we can hear. Open our eyes so we can see. Open our hands so we can give you praise. And Father, we thank you for the feet. Because we're able to stand in your presence. So in the name of Jesus, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You have your way in our midst, Lord. Have your way in our midst, Lord. your way, Lord. Lord give Let's give the praise team. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give them honor. Hallelujah. 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 I want y'all to understand how good God is. If he woke you up this morning, and he clothed you in your right minds. That's enough to say thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those with your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 12, verse 3. And I'm going to go to Romans 3, and I'm going to read verses 29 to 31. And, and, and I'm just going to give you what the Lord has given me. Those with your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 3, and it reads as such. For I say through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Turn with me to Romans chapter 3, beginning at the uh, 29th verse. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Setting it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void or nullify the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. If you will help me, I won't be before you long, but look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the measure of faith. You may take your seats. You know, when you think of a measure of faith, we always hear the story of God uh, having a faith the size of a mustard seed. And if you think of a mustard seed, it's very small seed, but it grows into a big plant. And when it's full grown, it don't just be that seed anymore, but it becomes a covering um, for um, the birds of the air and, and for animals to have shade, and also for us to sit on it. It's, it becomes that big tree, that mustard seed, that little faith. But just the thing that I want to plant into everyone's mind this morning is that God give every man the measure of faith. Even the ones that are not in the house, they all we all have God's DNA inside us. Nobody can say that they don't belong to God. The only difference is some of us have activated our faith and some have not. But to God, when God sees his creation, his prized creation, he sees his faith. So when God looks at us, he don't see our shortcomings. He sees what he placed inside of us, which is himself. He gives to every man a measure of faith. But the purpose of that faith is for us to respond when he calls. The purpose of that faith is to cause us to not just be dormant and, and, and be succumbed by our trials and our tribulations, but it causes us to be overcomers. I'm going somewhere. Look at your neighbor and say, the measure of faith. We know faith coming um, from hearing and hearing through the word of God. In one translation, it said of Christ, because we know Christ was the word of God that was that was was spoken and was manifested into flesh. That same Christ not only manifests itself, but that same Christ went to the cross on our behalf. He took on our iniquities. He didn't. He was sinless. He was spotless. He took on our trials, the trials that we were supposed to die for. But God, in the beginning, you know, we, 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 we hear about Adam, but we don't understand that in the beginning when God created us, we cre he created us in his image and likeness. So, that, but even with that, he also knew that man was not going to be faithful. He knew man was not going to keep his word. He knew man was not going to be committed. He knew man was going to succumb to the trials that he faced. He knew man was going to allow the world to dictate how he believed. So God reconciled. He, he, he made an agreement with himself. I tried. I gave them a king, but they weren't satisfied. I gave them a prophet, but they wasn't satisfied. So now I have to give them me. He's 
said, in other words, he gave every man a measure of faith so they can respond to his word. So what God is looking for us to do, when you look at this text, you look at, um, uh, uh, let me go to uh, Romans 12 because I want to take my time because I really want you to get what God has given me. 12 and 3. You know, but let me go back to um, verse verse 1. If We always quote the first two verses. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But we, we stop right there and we shout over that, but then verse 3 uh, hits you like a ton of bricks. A ton of bricks. It hits you. It will cause you to check yourself. It will cause you to look at God and, and understand that the, the position that you're in is because of God's grace and mercy. The things that we do, if we sing, is because of God's grace and mercy. If we teach, it's because of God's grace and mercy. If we usher, it's because of God's grace and mercy. If we deliver, it's because of God's grace and mercy. We don't deserve it, but he gave it to us. We didn't earn it, but he gave it to us. He gave us his DNA so we can respond. In other words, his faith that he gave us was a sign that God loved us above our mess. That he loved us above anything that we have done in the past, in the present, and in the future. Christ did it all for us. Just that little seed of faith. God said, if you trust me with your life, I promise you, you'll grow. I promise you, you won't be just concerned about yourself, but you'll be concerned about each other if you trust me. If you lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge me, I promise you, I'm going to give you direction. I promise you, I will be your hope when it seemed hopeless. I promise you that I'm going to make a way out of no way. I promise you that I'm going to cause you to always be triumphant. I promise you, because of that faith that, that God has placed in us. you that. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the measure of faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 says this, and without faith, it's impossible to please him for whosoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Listen what 11 and 6 says. It says, and without faith. So in other words, if we don't operate in faith, how can we say that we please God? If we don't operate um, um, by faith and through faith, how can we say? In other words, we don't have a monopoly over who is saved and who is not. All we got to do is just believe. Because there are some people that God has, has ordained to hear your voice. There's some people that God has ordained that are attached to you and they're waiting to hear you operate in the faith that God has placed inside of you because they need encouragement. They need to hear that it's still hope. They need to hear that their God is a deliverer. They need to hear that God is a keeper. They need to hear your voice. He did not give us the measure of faith so we can be on an island by ourselves and not understand that we are the body of Christ. The hand can't say I don't need the feet. The feet can't say I don't need the hand. The eyes can't say I don't need the ear. The ear can't say I don't need the eyes. In other words, we all function together by faith. And, 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 and in the spirit of God, there's no difference between male or female, bond or free, no matter what state you in in the natural to God you his seed you you got to understand when God looks at us we're the only thing that he created that's in his likeness and image you 
know how valuable that is? So in other words, we're more valuable than rubies and gold and silver. God looks at us, we're so valuable that even when we, we're sinful, he's still interceding on our behalf. Even though we, we're sinful, he's still giving us grace and mercy. Even though we're sinful, you know what you go through. You know what you're dealing with. When we come to church, we put on this persona like everything is all right. But God is saying enough is enough. I need my people who are called by my name that will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways because I got to speak to them and I need their ears open so they can walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk in the flesh, but we walk in the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You know what liberty means? Freedom. Freedom to lift your hands. Freedom to open your mouth. Freedom to declare his glory. Freedom to speak all is well, just like the Shumanite woman. Freedom to declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Freedom to say that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Freedom to say that by his stripes, I'm already healed. Look at yourself and say, self, I'm already healed. That's what faith does. The measure of faith that God gave us is holy. Don't you understand that he gave us holiness before we responded to him? Mm. I hope you get what I'm saying. Yes, you go through trials. Yes, you go through tribulations. But God placed something in us that is holy. All we got to do is activate our faith. And, pe- and God is looking for us to not have cliques, not have groups, but be his body. See, when my body is fully functioning, I'm walking like I'm all in one sink. I, I ain't got to tell it to do anything. It's just naturally doing everything. It's, if my feet move, my hands moving, and my head, my eyes, everything is all in tune. God is saying, I need you to be the same way with me. Because I've given you something. That will always cause you to be victorious. I've given you something that will always keep your mind in perfect peace. I've given you something that will remind you that I am a God that never leave you or forsake you. I've given you something that even when you fall, I'm there to pick you back up. I'm giving you something. That's what faith is. But God is saying, I don't need you to be be so big headed that you look down on people. I need you to understand that I need you to know that I need you to show the love that I showed for you when you was in your mess to somebody else. I need you to understand that the faith that I placed inside of you isn't for you, but it's for somebody else because somebody else need to hear that God is still sitting on the throne in a seat on our behalf, waiting to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. The seed of faith. God gave us this faith, but he, nobody got more than the other. Mm. He, give, he dealt every man the same measure. Every man has God inside of him. So what you see the hell they done did on last night or you seen what they did this morning, they still have God seen inside of them. Long as you got breath in your body, God is still able. Long as you're on this side, you got an opportunity to get it right. Look at your neighbor and say, hallelujah, the measure of faith. Acts 10, chapter 10, verse 34, 34 to 36, I just want to read this briefly because I want you to understand how God looks at his creation. It's easy to, to before I read, it's easy to um, put one group against another group because that group don't do things the way you do it. Or it's easy to the, the compare how someone dressed 
other than you. But but the thing is, God said, I didn't I didn't put my spirit in you for you to sit there and 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 cast stones and 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 cast lots and separate people. I, I, I put my spirit in you so you can be a beacon of light to those that need to see the light and to receive the light. God said, I did not put my spirit in you for you to to, to, to cut. You know how the light switch is? You cut it off. So you, you, you don't want no light. You don't want to um, run your electricity bill up. But God say, I, I didn't, you ain't got to worry about no bill with me because if you keep your light on, somebody's going to see the light in you. All you got to do is just believe. See, this measure of faith that God is talking about, he's talking about you believing in him, that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He wants you to believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He wants you to believe that by his stripes you are already healed. He wants you to believe that he able to save you to the uttermost. He wants you to believe that no weapon shall form against you shall prosper. He wants you to believe that God is a present help in your time of trouble. That's what the measure of faith is about. God loved us that much that he cared for us even when we was messed up, jacked up, tied up, tangled up. So we don't have uh, uh, no monopoly on nobody because the same God that saved us when we were in the gutter is the same God that can save somebody else. See, this message is really about he had to deal with Peter. Peter was a Jew, you know, the Jew of Jews. He, 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 the, but the thing I, that, that, that stuck with me, Bishop, was, was that um, Peter had to be in a trance and God had to come to him three times. How many times God got to come to you to get you to respond? But then it took me down memory lane when, when, when Peter said, Lord, I won't deny you. And, and, and Jesus said, um, um, Peter, um, um, are you going to deny me when the rooster crow um, uh, three times? The third time when you hear him crow, you, you're going to deny me, Peter. But I pray for you that your faith faileth you not. See, God already knew that he was going to deny him, but he still had love enough to tell him you're going to recover. How many times we see people do stuff and we just think that's the end result and what God is saying, I don't need you to see what they're doing. I need you to see they're recovering. I need you to see that the same faith that I placed in you, I placed, I placed in them. See, I was fine this morning, Bishop, but you know, as soon as I, I say, Lord, I'm going to die to myself, I'm, I'm just the clay and you the potter, and, 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 and however you want me to present this message, I'm going to give it to your people just as you gave it to me. Stop trying to say who is saved and who is not saved. God is the Lord of all. All things was created by him and for him, not anything that was made. His hand had orchestrated everything. So if, if anybody want to ask you, uh, can that person be saved? Say yes. Can that person be delivered? Yes. Can that person be set free? Yes. Can that person be made whole? Yes. See what our response should be as believers? Hallelujah. When we trust the spirit of God, our answer should be yes. To his will and to his way. God is able. Jesus Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He did not come for us to be succumbed by him. But he came that we will be a light to help liberate you. Somebody need to see your loss. Our hiding days are over. Let me say that again. Our hiding days are over. Hallelujah. Because people are looking, they are searching, waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. And I'm not going to add nothing else to the word because in the spirit of God, there's neither male or female. So if you're getting caught up on that, check your spirit. You got to stop playing church. Because God wants us to speak his word. He don't want us to add to it. He don't want us to take from it. He wants us to speak his word. 
if you can't handle his word, then let's get back at the altar. Discipline, and you know what? I, I, I wrestled with my, I'm about to say dad, but I wrestled with Bishop when he first used to tell me, discipline is not your friend. wrestled with him and I first heard and I was like oh, what do I do now you know I used to say that to myself but as I matured in, 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 in the faith that God has placed inside me I, I understand something His, the discipline that he was teaching me wasn't hurting me it was helping me but then it took me back and I had to go back and I say dad you <laughs> there you say it again <laughs> bishop you was right Because, see, if we don't understand what, how faith operates, we will make people think that this is just a gimme, 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 gimme thing. No, God ain't like that. God chases those he loves. That's why he gave us his faith. He wanted to make sure we don't stay in our sins. He wanted us to know that he wanted to free us from the bondage of sin. You know what the law, people, people say, you know, I don't want to go and do the Old Testament. It's still good. It's God's scripture. It's still holy. But just the thing, if we condemn people by the law, then we're saying Christ is ineffective. But what he's saying is, no, we, all we got to do is live it. The word of God is a, is a, is a, is a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. If you really want to know what God's plan is for your life, you got to spend time in his word. If you really want to know what type of faith you have, you have to spend time in his word. If you really want to know um, what you need to pray about, you need to spend time in his word. God want to hear his word come back to him. He responds to his word. He is moved by his word. That's why he said, when his people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and turn. He talking about turn from your fleshly behaviors, your fleshly habits, your, that, that ism, that schisms in the flesh, the cliques, the devouring each other, the, the willingness not to forgive. How can we say we represent God and we still hold in unforgiveness? See, that's what that seed of faith is really pushing us to. We got to get to the point that we love each other as Christ loved the church. Love each other with an everlasting love. Not questioning somebody ain't doing what they should do. If you spend time looking at what they ain't doing, guess what? You ain't doing nothing. Uh-oh. See, this day we remember Christ, his body, that was bruised and beaten for our transgressions. He was beaten for our mistakes, our shortcomings. Who wouldn't want to serve a God that took on our sin, who knew no sin? I'm preaching harder now. Who wouldn't want a, a relationship with a God that will keep your mind in perfect peace? And rose for our justification. He was going to rise anyway, but he rose for us. So the Father can send us a comforter that will keep us and lead us and guide us in all truth. The truth is the word. The word of God is a sword. The songwriter wrote the song, I got my sword in my hand. I got my sword in my hand. I got my sword in my hand. I'm ready for war. I got my sword in my hand. That is telling us something. You have to spend time in his word so you ain't got to carry the Bible, but the word of God is in you. So when you go through things, guess what you speak? The word of God.
When you need healing, you speak the word of God. When you need deliverance, you speak the word of God. If you need restoration, you speak the word of God. No matter what you go through, speak the word. God is waiting to hear our voices. He's saying, I need my people to understand I'm waiting for them. I'm waiting for them to the point that I'm still giving them grace. I'm still giving them mercy. I done gave them my son, but they're not satisfied, but I'm still giving them mercy. They don't deserve it, but I'm still giving it. They're not seeking me with their whole heart, but I'm still giving it. He said, I need my people to understand how much I love them. I love them with an everlasting love. My love for you is not for now, it's for eternity. I love you from the beginning until the end. When you were born, when you were being formed in your mother's womb, I loved you. God is saying, I need them to understand how important I need them to walk by faith and not by sight. Stop allowing the enemy to control how you believe. We called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let your light so shine that men can see. Somebody need to see your light. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, turn on your light. Everybody stand. what's been keeping the body from functioning like it's supposed to. But I'm not going to be the cause of the body not functioning. I'm making an appeal to all believers. Let's line up with Christ right now. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to those who endure to the end. Let's operate by faith and do faith right now. Because God is sending people our way and and he don't need us passing judgment. He don't need us pointing fingers. He need us just to believe that he can do exceedingly and abundantly Above all, we can even ask or even imagine. Because they're coming. Are you going to sit back and not move with the spirit or are you going to move with the spirit? That's all he asks me to to do today. Encourage my people to operate in the faith they already have. Encourage them. That the faith I gave them comes with power. Mm. Power to cast things out. Power to restore some things. Power to do all things. See, he gave us a seed that automatically grows. But he need us to believe. I don't know who I'm talking to right now somebody here know you're not operating in the faith level that God got in your heart he's tugging on you even right now the altar is open all hands lifted and even when I start praying if you desire to be at this altar watch what God do in your life I promise you when you step out on faith and just believe God going to restore you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, because, Lord, our hope is rooted and grounded in thee and thee alone. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our restorer. Jesus Christ is our, is, 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 is that, is that, is that brand, that root, that true vine that connects us back to you, Lord. So we thank you right now, Lord, that we're not going to leave here the same way we came, but we believe that you are a rewarder of those that diligently seek you. 
you have no respect of person. You gave to everybody that same measure of faith. See, it's somebody else that know they need to be at the altar with this young mother. Don't wait because tomorrow is not promised. See, we ain't got to do anything. That's right. I told y'all before what God told me is when they, when, when they come to the altar, he's going to do the delivering. You know you haven't cried out to God in a long time. Today is your day. You know you need to be restored. Today is your day. Don't leave the same way you came. But leave with power. There's somebody else. I feel it in my sanctified soul. Somebody else. Know they need to step out by faith and come to this altar. Yokes are being destroyed right now. Burdens are being lifted right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. We, he need to hear your voice. Come on, come on. This young lady crying at the altar. Come on, open your mouth. What shall you say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. God is waiting to hear your voice. When we start learning to intercede for each other, watch what God do for us. In the name of Jesus. Come on, young people. I need you to open your mouth. I need you to open your mouth. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want you to scratch out your healing hand to our first lady. Touch her body right now. From the, sole of, from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, Lord God. Lord God, we even ask you to dry up the very seed, the very cause of a condition, Lord God. We believe in by faith. That by your stripes, she's already healed. Lord, stretch out your healing hand to our bishop right now. From the top of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord God. Lord, we praise you right now, Lord, that by your stripes, he's already healed. And Lord, anyone else that is in the audience that know they need a breakthrough from you, Lord God, stretch out your hand now. We didn't come this morning to be spectators, but we came to be participators. We scratching out. Because he said that when two or three touch and agree in the Korea thing, that it should come to pass. So, Lord, we scratching out in our faith. We scratching out and we believe in you that you are a reward of those that diligently seek you. Heal right now. Deliver right now. Set captives free right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, I still believe there's somebody else that knew they should have come to this altar. Do not leave. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. God got great. 